Let's dive right in. This is a reasonably accurate model of a NEMA 17 stepper motor, the type you would find standard with most 3D printers or for general hobbyist projects. This particular model is set up for use with cycles, and the motor itself is marked as an asset for use with Blender's asset library in versions 3.0 and onwards. The dimensions are real-world accurate, and if I were to rotate it, you can actually see on the bottom that it is similar to what you would expect of a real motor all the way around. You'll notice that when I rotated the motor, the wires also moved with it, and that leads to the next point. There are a few collections here in the outliner. The first is for the motor itself, and then cameras, lighting, and basic background. Under that we see two collections, one for colored wires and one for fully black wires. The connectors on each end, namely right here for inserting into the motor or generally for just general electrical contact, are also reasonably accurate and they have a number of controls. The first thing to note is that by default the colored wires are enabled. If I simply come into the render view, you can see these are some standard wire colors that you might expect, and if you want to simply switch between the two, then simply check mark the box for the black wires and uncheck the camera icon, making sure that you have the relevant one selected for the viewport. So if we uncheck the colored wires, you can now see we have the black wires visible, but we can also switch between them quite easily. Just make sure that the camera is on for whichever one you want in the final render, and disabled for the collection you don't want. Both sets of wires have the same basic controls. They are parented to the motor first, meaning that if I simply select the motor, and then hit G and move around, everything will move with it. If, however, I want to control some aspect of the wires specifically, I have a number of empties to use. I can grab the main center empty, and this is true for both the colored and black wires, and use this to move the whole collection of wires around. If I want to adjust just the ends, then I can simply select one of the smaller control empties, and then with G, I can move this around and the wires will follow. You can also rotate these and it will accommodate extra movements. The connectors are also largely accurate, and so if I grab this endpoint here at Rx and 180 degrees, you can see this is the bottom of a connector that you might expect. Now granted, you can only rotate so far without having the wire connections break down, but this is pretty good for basic applications. It's also worth noting that the two sets of wires are a little bit different. The colored wires are simple curves that have a start point and an end point. In contrast, the black wires, if I were to select one of them, you can see that they have a number of points along the length of the wire, and that adds extra control. It also means that the movement from the connectors is a little bit more constrained. So you see this is kind of coming up more snake-like, as opposed to the colored wires where if I were to grab the end controller and move this, the whole wire moves. But you can easily adjust between the two sets by simply selecting the individual wires and then changing their material to any of these selected options or adding your own custom materials, if that's better for your purpose. On the note of materials, let's close off by discussing the stepper motor. When I zoom in, you can see there's a slight banding along the casing, as you might expect to see on regular stepper motors. If I select this and then come to the Materials tab and choose the stepper casing, I can then open a new window, so we'll open one here, and we'll change this to the Shader Editor. If we come all the way along to the side here to this wave texture, I can change the number of repetitions of these ridges by simply changing this scale value. So it's set to 75 by default, but if I drop to a lower value, I will get fewer gradations, and if I move to a higher value, I'll get a higher number. So 75 is where it is by default. Many thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon who help make the creation of these assets possible. This is part of a larger project on making highly accurate models of common pieces used in open source automation projects. If you'd like to access these models, they are available for free on Gumroad and BlendSwap with a CC0 public domain license. If you'd like to support my efforts, please check out my Patreon, which is linked below. But with that, thanks for coming in. If you find these models useful, consider subscribing, tagging me with your work on Twitter at CGFigures, or mentioning CGFigures to your friends and colleagues. Until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.